Thank you for staying with us. You're still watching The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Well, EFCC is an unlawful organization, and that has been said by Olisa Agbakoba. Olisa Agbakoba, the former president of the Nigerian Bar Association, has called the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, an unconstitutional organization asserting that its establishment exceeded the powers of the National Assembly. In letters addressed to the Senate and House of Representatives uh, Constitution Reviews Committee, Agbakova urged for legislative attention on law enforcement reforms and anti-corruption efforts. He highlighted ongoing challenges to the EFCC's constitutionality by some states expressing hope that legal actions will clarify its validity and address inconsistencies among law enforcement agencies. Agbakova also requested a public hearing to discuss necessary constitutional reforms aimed at improving Nigeria's anti-corruption framework. Now joining us to discuss this is Evans Ufeli. He is a constitutional lawyer. Good morning, sir. Thank you for joining us. Hello, Mr. Ufeli. Good morning to you. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you now. Good morning. Thank you for joining us. Very well. All right. So we're talking about EFCC, and you are a lawyer. Can you tell us how the EFCC, what foundation it was formed upon? Well, the formation of the EFCC actually was um, founded on the basis of the UN Convention Against Corruption. If you look at um, Article 36 of the UN Convention Against Corruption, um, all members, all member countries, uh, were actually mandated by that treaty to go set up that institution. Mm. And what you call the EFCC Establishment Act today was actually that convention reduced into an act by the National Assembly. That's what now have the EFCC Establishment Act. Now, in 2003, 2004, when that act was promulgated, or when that convention was reduced to an Act of the National Assembly. There are certain protocols in the Constitution that were supposed to be complied with. Uh, one of which is that Section 12 of the 1999 Constitution have made the foundation upon which you uh, we get to propagate a law that has drawn its strength from an international treaty. And um, the Section 12 says that the National Assembly will come up with that law and that it requires the concurrence of the State House of Assembly to bring that to existence. Now, the EFCC was formed without the concurrence of the State House of Assembly. And when you look at it, um, they fall short of the requirements for the promulgation of that law. And as such, to that extent, the EFCC stands in Kuwait. The law that forms the stands in Kuwait but then he said, UAC was a matter for it, that if a matter is void, the law is a nullity, as you cannot put something or nothing and expect it to stand if it collapse. So it is a clear case of violation of Section 12 of the 1999 Constitution. If you look at uh, um, Section 12, Subsection 2, the Constitution says that the National Assembly has the right to make laws on matters not included in the uh, exclusive uh, legislative exclusive list, okay, yeah. for the purposes of you know ratifying the treaty. So um, the influence and the breadth of the EFCC Establishment Act is from that law, and because the Conference of National Assembly was not sought and obtained, um, it is incorrect and sin. Uh, the implication, therefore, is that every conviction, every case EFCC have undertaken, and that is running, and all that put together, by the time the Supreme Court gets to a ruling in the favor of the existing state, it will mean that all the EFCC's conviction, case undertaking, are all invalid. Mm. So, obviously, Olisa has said that EFCC is an unlawful organization, and that is quite a very strong claim. So, what are some things that you think would have constituted this claim, to say that EFCC is unlawful? It is unlawful. Any lawyer that, uh, that is thoughtful of the Constitution has a grown law. Mm -hmm. uh, the Constitution is supreme. 
Okay, that's what the law says. And this provision should have a binding force of all persons and authority. Every law must conform with the Constitution. Now, you have one law that set up an institution that did not conform with the Constitution. Okay? Mm. The system states that before, before the court, they brought this action on the breadth of it in Mubike, Joseph Mubike versus the Federal Republic of Nigeria. The Supreme Court defined the status of EFCC as an institution, mm. stating that its formation is tied to the UN Convention on Corruption, against corruption. And to that extent, the, the Supreme Court before now, in the case of Joseph Wobike, has already defined the status of the Supreme Court, uh, the status of uh, the EFCC, okay? Mm. And so because there's no court in the land that can, you know, um, uh, contradict the resolve of the Supreme Court to that effect. So when you look at it crit critically, uh, it's an error, it's an oversight that must be corrected because for the purposes of posterity and the future, an institution, a government institution that's not properly constituted cannot fight corruption. Mm. And that is evidence in what you see they do. They are not able to fight because it, the, 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 the ESNC have no breadth of law to start with. So why would you take an institution that have no breadth of law to go enforce law? That is putting something on nothing. Mm. No more that quad non habet. You cannot give what you don't have. What you don't have authority to give, when you give it, you give it onto illegality. So it's just quite very clear. You see, Daniel's all over the place talking about, and eh, just leave them, let them be there. No, that's not a lawyer, don't think like that. For we in the profession, we look at the constitutionality and the illegality of every institution that is out there performing one function or the other. Okay? Mm. And from the standpoint of the formation of that institution, that have grown so and become so big today is faulty. And we will not be scared to say that the EFCC is illegal. I would not be at least scared to say that because the law that brought it to existence is incorrect. And when you have an incorrect formation, that means you, you fall short of the re requirement for the purposes of a standing tall as an institution validly constituted to fight corruption. Mm. Okay, we cannot close our eyes to that. But so the um that that institution needs to be retooled or reconstituted or at best is crap like the fifteen states sitting to have in their prayers. Mm. Okay. So I mean, listen to what you've said, and I'm sure a lot of people can attest to this, the way EFCC go about, especially, especially when it comes to like um, arrests and all of that. In fact, there was a woman in the news that was speaking about how her husband was being arrested and they didn't even have enough claims. And we've seen things like that happen time and time again. So there's some, uh, there, would I say a lack of accountability and transparency with the EFCC and how they go about their business. But I want to ask, we have two organizations that are supposed to fight corruption. We have the ICPC and then we have the EFCC. Why do we have a duplication or a duplicity of the same thing in Nigeria? Well, the ICPC was formed alongside that to fight corruption against civil servants, civil servants. Mm. Why the ESCP to deal with economic and financial crimes, mm. okay? Now, um, there's a reason for that. ICPC, they have a special training in um, these issues about corruption in civil service, because they know how the civil service works. Is it, it's, is that not, is it, is Excuse me. Is that is that not something that, especially if we're even saying we want, and I know this is going off off tangent, but if we're saying that we want to even cut the cost of governance and all of that, isn't the function of the EFCC and the ICPC can't one organization be able to function in that, both that, both ways? That, that's a that, that's a different conversation yeah. because it's in the oral science report. It's in the oral science yes, report that yes. the president said they want to implement. Okay, mm -hmm. yeah. so until they implement it, I mean, it remains like that. Okay, it's a different conversation entirely. Um, if you look at the, 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 the case, the brief filed by the, the 15 states, part of their prayers in that brief is that one, that the federal government, you know, every month, we, we have what they call the derivation principle, where the federal government sends funds to 
states every yes. every every month, okay, mm -hmm. for the owners of their own administration as as sub sovereign, mm -hmm. uh, as regions, okay. Mm -hmm. Now, and part of their prayer is that when the federal government has sent these funds to them, the federal government have divest themselves of that fund. Now, the federal government have no right under the law, under federalism, to come under any guise, EFCC or whatever, to tell the guy how those funds are spent. Okay? Mm. And did be, we are practicing proper federalism. These respective states, if they were managing their resources, and if they were contributing to the center, can the center, the federal government, now maintain EFCC to go question them on how they are, they, are, they are managing the funds that they are getting from their own, uh, own, own engagements. Okay, so if we are dealing with federalism, proper federalism, and then what we have now is an improper one uh, where the federal government have to send funds to state for their own sustenance. Should they not have an institution after sending the funds that will go and tell the guy the funds? whether they are properly spent or not. I know that there is corruption in the states, and governors, many of them, uh, have an allegation here and there, charges here and there of corruptions and, and the rest of that. But the truth is that we have not been able to come up with a proper federal structure, and that is why uh, we're having this problem. Otherwise, the states themselves are supposed to have their own uh, economic and financial crime or whatsoever they want to call it. Okay. And um, we should have we should have a proper federal system so that what the states acquires by virtue of their autonomy, they will be able to manage sin. And uh, if you have a situation where you have far cry here and there, then you're able to create institutions to that effect. So that argument, whether right or wrong, because part of the argument, whether right or wrong, the Supreme Court will pronounce on it. All right. Okay? But what we know from the standpoint of law, and on that section, uh, uh, that section uh, 12, is the ESCC need to be reconstituted, need to be properly retooled, to be in tandem with the law okay. before it can claim jurisdiction to fight corruption. All right. So, um, I mean, the, the EFCC, there are allegations that it has been used as a, will I say, a, a political tool for vendetta, right? Do you think maybe this, in a way, has played a major role? It's a factor whereby the legitimacy of it being a lawful organization that it was supposed to be constituted for in the first place is now being undermined? Well, not many people were looking at this formation mm. before now, until until started meddling itself up, until it started this contradiction, right? Um, until until it began to lose focus. Mm. Now, when it started losing focus, we now say, wait a minute. And um, they went back to they had to go back to the formation and look at how the formation. They, they democracy was only fledging at the at the time, okay? Mm. And what you now have is an institution that is being called to question whether it is because of their operations, whether it's because of their uh, incompetence or whatever it is, or whatever excuse people have to give, have no bearing actually on the case on that reference. Because the issue now is not about whether they are competent or not. Nobody is talking about their, at least in this case, whether they, they are following our objective, whether they are competent, whether they are whatever. Nobody is talking about that now. What we're saying now is that the formation itself is the formation now, you know, in tandem with law. Uh, why should an institution like that be fighting corruption when it has uh, it has uh, the, the wrong foundation? It's not properly constituted. Or why should um, the the states? Why should it could be said let the the the, the, uh, the filing of that suit? All of a sudden, why would 15 states join just overnight, just join the suits and all that, and asking for the same thing. Okay? So let's, there are people who have argued that it's because the ESC is against this governance. That is why. Where that argument is fine and valid. There's also another argument as to the validity, the, the formation of the ESC. That's another argument too. The Supreme Court will only two. Mm. So whether it's for vendetta, whether it's for, uh, because of the operations, or whatever it is, whoever have been hurt or not hurt and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, we cannot run away from the legality of the operations. Right. Because if we do so, it will mean that um, we're using an institution that's not properly constituted 
to arrest and prosecute people. And what that would mean is anarchy. Right. Anarchy in the sense that the an institution that have no breadth of law cannot come to the fore to fight corruption or to enforce any law in the first place. Mm. So speaking about the, the legality now, what are some reforms you think um, needs to be done with the ESCC to ensure that, you know, they're, they're moving with the Constitution? Well, the reform I think that must be done is that the ESCC needs to be retooled. Mm -hmm. um, the National Assembly must go back to work, okay? Go back to work and then uh, repromulgate that law, okay? Pass it in the House and then send it to the state house of assembly for their concurrence. To take majority, will make up, will make it proper. But I, I doubt whether these states I'm seeing, these 15 that's already <laughs> seen already in court, mm. whether they will, they are saying that the assembly will comport to anything that has to do with the FCC. But it is their cross, they have to bear it. The National Assembly must go reconsider this matter is in court. And we are waiting for the Supreme Court to make pronouncement. But nothing in the law says we cannot talk about issues uh, in the news or issues in court. The only thing the law forbids is for us to preempt the outcome of the court. And that is not what we are doing. Section 22, subsection 1 of the 1999 Constitution, empowers the media, the press, to hold government accountable to the people. And that's only what we are doing here. So we are not preempting the court, but we are saying that uh, on the basis of law, on the basis of what we know from the Constitution, uh, there is a need for, for them to find a way to amend or reconstitute or bring this institution back to proper existence. It, 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 the way it is now, um, the faults cannot be overlooked. Mm. Uh, the, I mean, the, the people at states who are in court are caught for a reason. They don't just wake up without a case to go to court to question that. I mean, when it's about by SN, I've been saying these things, not just, not just this, this uh, period. Mm. He's been saying it before now that that institution must be called to question, and uh, that's why I wrote that letter to the Constitutional um, Amendment Committee of the National Assembly, both houses, to for them to look into that institution and do something very important about it. That is the role of the National Assembly in the first place. Mm. All right, so earlier on you had said EFCC should probably be scrapped or maybe fine-tuned. Um,